at least I hope we are live. God, I hate the new live producer. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. I think it's working now. Welcome to this episode of um, Lilith's live show. Today I will talk about how you can recognize and advance your spiritual gifts. And I'm really excited about that. Now let's just wait to see who wants to join me here live. For everybody who is on the recording, definitely follow up with me in the comments where you can post all of your questions and just share anything that comes up for you. To everybody who is live, please say hi as you come online so I know that you're there. And so I know that I can see the comments, which is not always a given at the moment. Facebook has changed a lot in the past few months. So today we're going to talk about um, what spiritual gifts even are and how you can recognize your own unique gifts and how you can expand your consciousness so that, so that you can advance your personal gifts. And I say let's dive in. Okay, so let's start with what are spiritual gifts. So I don't want you to think of spiritual gifts just in terms of clairsentience or clairvoyance or being able to channel or to heal with your hands or to see people's auras. I mean, all of your talents, abilities, character traits can be spiritual gifts if you infuse them with your heart and soul and if you consciously use them for your own good and the good of others. To give you an example of that, just think of um, Deva Premal or Ajit Kaur, um, they sing and, and through their words and, and voice and the pace of the music and the instruments that they choose, they impart a message of, of hope and of love and, and the, the feeling, the feeling, the, the experience of that as well. And that definitely is a spiritual gift. I think you'll agree here. Another example would be gardening. Um, I used to live in the eco-village Findhorn in Scotland. And in the 1960s, they grew huge vegetables there uh, on sandy, barren soil. And in doing so, they created a wave of, of awareness uh, about how we can co-create with nature and with spirit. Hi, Magda, how are you doing? And of course, there are the everyday, everyday gifts that might come to your mind, like being able to really listen to somebody like with your whole body and soul, having a big heart, um, loving somebody unconditionally, having the gift of inspiring others, infusing the food that you cook with, with love. And we should never take these things for granted. I mean, they're such powerful um, healing tools and the more consciously we use them and the more willing we are to share them with more and more people, the more good we can do in the world. And then there are, of course, the classical spiritual gifts like um, being able to communicate with animals, with, with nature, with, with spirit, working with the forces of nature um, like the moon and the elements knowing how to use herbs and crystals, how to um, call upon the aid of our ancestors and our spirit guides, how to talk to deceased loved ones, helping others um, heal by shifting energies, being able to perceive outside of the range of our normal senses, knowing how to read omens, the list goes on. Let me know in the comments what your, um, what your favorite spiritual gifts are, which ones would you like to have yourself and why. And then we will start um, doing an exercise together to recognize your unique spiritual gifts, the ones that you already have. So 
So we are all ancient souls who have incarnated in this life to fulfill a specific purpose. And that purpose is directly connected to our unique gifts. Our purpose is simply put, to share them. And that is self-realization if we do that. If we realize who we are, what we can do and express that in the world. You know, who we, knowing who you are and finding and owning your gifts and sharing them with those who need your help. That is absolutely your purpose. That's everyone's purpose. And deep down, we all know that we all know what our unique gifts are, but we have an uncanny ability to forget or to think that our abilities and qualities are not so special after all. And this comes from a lack of self-worth and, um, and self-love and um, self-awareness that we have all started to develop in our childhoods as a reaction to the feedback that we receive from those around us. And unfortunately, we didn't understand at the time that this feedback had much more to do with the people um, who we have received it from than with ourselves. Now, as adults, it's time that we remembered who we were and, and what we came here to share with the world. Because we all have unique gifts. So let's do a little exercise to get more clarity on what they are. I hope you all have a piece of paper and a pen ready. I do. I want to do this myself. Very aware of my own unique gifts, but this, these simple exercises can always bring you another layer of, of clarity. Magda, you're saying connecting with elements and crystals, that's something that you would like to learn. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, Magda, you've been in the transformation for so long. Like, um, for, think about the fire rituals that we often do on a full moon. That's a way of working with, with the elements, for example. And, um, and crystals. I mean, crystals are um, amazing, you know, stones. I mean, the gift of stones is just, they are, you know, the, the, their beingness. That's such an amazing thing, you know. I mean, if you think of animals and people, we just run around, you know. We, we can walk and run and then there's plants who are different because they're, you know, they're not always the same. They're, they're you know, evolving and growing and flowering and, you know, have fruits and then they're barren again. So they change, but they don't change location. So that's a different thing. But then think of stones, a whole different thing altogether. They're just there. They don't do anything at all. They don't breathe. They don't move. You know, that's, that's just amazing. They've developed such a long time ago and they hold so much awareness and power. And that's also why it's very difficult to work with them. That's why in my programs, I only share the basics about how to do it because I don't feel like I know enough. I've hardly ever met anybody who knows enough about crystals to work with them safely. So that's why I always recommend specialize in a few of them and get to know them really well. That's what I do. I have a few crystals that I work with that I know really well, that I know how to use powerfully, but that's all I do. I don't deal with the other ones. And Martina, you're saying connecting with the moon, with the sun and the elements. Yes, this is beautiful. And in the apprenticeship, that's what we are exploring as well with the ritual. So if this is something you're interested in, you might want to work that into the ritual um, and the meditation that you're just creating. And let's do the exercise, okay? So close your eyes and just get comfortable where you're sitting with your spine straight. And then start to feel into your body. Soften your brow. Relax your eyes. Relax your jaw. Make your throat soft. Relax your neck.
Relax your chest. Relax your shoulders down. Soften your belly. Soften your lower back. Relax your hips. Buttocks. Your thighs. Calf muscles. And let any tension go from your feet. Relax your arms and hands. Your whole body is now completely relaxed. Now feel into your breathing. Feel your breath flowing into your body at your nostrils. Feel your chest rising, your belly rising slightly. And feel the air leaving your body again. Now feel into all the energy that is gathered inside of your head. All of your awareness and presence is right here in your mind. As you breathe in, gather your presence inside of your head. And as you breathe out, let it effortlessly flow downwards into your throat and all the way down into your heart space. Breathing in, gather the energy. Breathing out, let it flow downwards. Now you feel how you're becoming so much more present with yourself in this moment. And then you can open your eyes and start writing down the answers to the following questions without thinking. Just letting the answers flow out of your hand without censoring anything. First question is, what did I love doing as a child? And the second question is, what fascinated me as a child? The third question is, what am I proud of when it comes to what I can do?
And the fourth question is, what qualities do I most cherish in myself? The next question is, what activity makes me delight in myself? And the sixth question is, how do I enjoy to help others? And the seventh question is, what abilities and qualities do others compliment me on? And the eighth question, two more to go, is what comes to me so easily it would feel weird to take money for it? And the last question is, if I wouldn't have to work for money, what would I do with my time? Okay, and then it's slowly time to end this exercise and share with us in the comments what came to you. Martina, the third question was... Um, the third question was... What am I proud of when it comes to what I can do? I hope you got some golden nuggets in there.
and I hope you were able to be specific. Magda, Martina, what came to you? Everybody on the recording? Also, please do let me know in the comments. The more I know what your abilities are, the better I can tell you how you can expand them. So let's start talking about how we can do that in general, okay? How can you advance your spiritual gifts? And the first thing I hope is obvious, but I don't think that many of us do it, is we need to prioritize them. We got those gifts for a reason, so we need to just do more of it. We need to make it a priority to do what we love, to express ourselves, to delight in ourselves. We need to make it a habit, okay? And the best way you can do that is to establish a short daily or a longer weekly routine, a practice, okay? Only practice makes you master anything. So if you already know that you should, um, you know, spend more time in nature because one of your gifts is receiving um, insights from trees, for example. Or if you, um, if you love um, singing and dancing like I do, and this is how you relax, which in turn makes you then, um, you know, receive insights, for example. Um, this is absolutely something that you want to make a habit out of. So if you find this difficult to do what you love on a regular basis, if you struggle with doing that, so definitely just ask for a supporting sister here in our circle. That's why we have this beautiful women's circle of um, over 800 women who can help you, um, you know, can lovingly hold you accountable. So just tell them, you know, my, my unique spiritual gifts are and list them and then say, um, I want to do more of that. Who would like to be my supporting sister and hold me accountable? And of course, you can do the same thing for her. This is something that I always do with my best friend um, when I'm starting a new project and it's um, difficult to get into the habit of actually doing it. Um, then we always do that together, which is so helpful because, you know, like we just commit to writing to each other every day after we finish the task and it, it's just it's a really good way to make sure that it happens martina you want me to repeat question seven um which one was seven seven was what abilities and qualities do others compliment me on so what do you get compliments about from people People always tell me how I'm so calm and I have, you know, such a calming vibe and I don't experience myself as calm at all. But there you go. Um, good. So doing more of it, okay? This is definitely what we want to do. And then, of course, if you want to advance any kind of spiritual gift that you have, you need to expand your consciousness for that to happen. Okay, the more you learn how to perceive energies, the more you will be able to use your gifts in a way that makes sense in that moment. And, um, you know, there are just so many lost occasions for working with higher levels of consciousness that we miss because we don't even perceive the chance for it. And of course, this is also how you add more power to your abilities and how you expand your gifts and develop new ones. So what we want is to access higher levels of consciousness. So to understand how consciousness works, we need to understand the mind. Okay, the way that I like to visualize things is this. Everyday consciousness is what we use in, in our ordinary lives as we go about our ordinary reality. So that is the world that we experience in the here and now and that we can perceive without expanded awareness. The, the, the reality that most people would agree on. Like if I say there's this beautiful fancy plant that I have here, then most people would be able to say, okay, I see this plant. This is what we can perceive with everyday consciousness. It's the level of consciousness that we use to cook and to talk and to walk and to, you know, to perceive uh, flowers and uh, 
or rather see flowers and um, houses and carts and hear children play. And then there are levels of consciousness above and below that everyday level, which we can call higher consciousness. Okay, so if you imagine this everyday kind of reality or awareness here in the middle, then there's higher consciousness above that, but there's also higher consciousness below that. Okay. Um, when we want to witness what goes on in our subconscious, so below, we still need higher consciousness for it. That is expanded awareness, if, even if the layer we access is below our everyday consciousness. So here in the subconscious, we can deal with our instinctual self, our most basic needs, like feeling safe, being grounded here on Earth. And this is also where we can work with our um, traumas, fears, everything that actually is um, guiding our, our actions and decisions, but we, that we're not actually aware of normally. So the realm of this level of consciousness is what we call the lower world in shamanism. And the awareness of this realm of existence leads us to have a lot of understanding and compassion for our human self, the earthbound part of who we are, and all the troubles that we encounter through our incarnation. And then there is the level above our um, everyday consciousness. And then it's the superconscious. So this is where we can perceive light beings, we gain clarity, we experience ourselves as pure love and light, we find forgiveness and hope. And gaining awareness of this layer of consciousness is what makes us reconnect to the eternal part of who we are, to the soul level of our existence, to the unique purpose that we have in this lifetime, and the men's force for goods that we can be if we choose to. And then there is the middle world, which is the energetic equivalent to our everyday reality. So it's like, it's, it happens in the same space as ordinary reality. Okay, so I, I'm in this room now, I have my, my, um, my plants here painted on the wall, I have this actual plant here, this is what I can perceive in ordinary reality but here in the same room there is also the middle world which is the energetic equivalent to it all so this plant has an aura that i can perceive if i look at it um, through the eyes of, of higher if i access higher consciousness okay for example or some of you if you access higher consciousness you might see my aura right now Okay, so I'm in, the, I'm in ordinary reality right here, but at the same time, this is also where the middle world is happening now. For example, if you wanna work with um, plants and the spirits, the devas, then you just go out in your garden, that's an ordinary reality, but you can only talk to the plant spirits or see them, perceive them, feel them, if you access higher consciousness and then you enter into the middle world. I hope this makes sense. Everybody who's... Um, who's learned shamanic journeying with me already, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have questions about any of this, please don't hesitate to ask. That's what I'm here for. Good. Um, yeah, are there any questions at this point? I have three different drinks today. Smoothie, water and coffee. Yeah, coffee. Like the one monthly coffee that I have, it's this kind of day. Magda, you said I found out in the Kabbalah, they also have a tree of life. It's amazing how people perceive this all around the world simultaneously. Yes, it is. So actually yesterday in, in um, the apprenticeship session that I held, I was talking about the fact that and our tree of life that we um <clears throat> that we have in our um, place of power in the stone circle that we always start our shamanic journeys with this tree of life actually is the representation of the um <coughs> excuse me i should learn not to drink anything but water when i do my sessions the same thing happened yesterday in a session i had tea and not even that worked for my voice there we go. So the tree of life really is the representation of these different layers of consciousness. <clears throat> so
so um, level with the earth that would be that's the middle world that's that would be that level and then the treetop is um, a representative of of higher consciousness and then the roots of um, the tree would be you know like our subconscious but if we actually want to access the upper world and the lower world that we travel on shamanic journeys then you have to go beyond the treetop beyond the sun the stars the planets and then pierce that layer and this is when you land um in the upper world same thing as for the lower world you have to actually go through the earth and it's far far below the roots and all of it to actually land in the lower world now there is an important prerequisite to be able to access the subconscious and the superconscious parts of yourself and that is a relaxed body and a quiet mind so if you haven't learned how to calm your mind at will yet i have a short and sweet shamanic meditation for you in this circle it's called out of the mind into the heart it's one of my um, basic and very important foundational practices where i show you how you can flow out of your um, busy head through a simple process that i have developed and if you find it really hard to relax your body, um, if you hold a lot of tension, um, make it a habit to move every day for a few minutes and you know just have it as your intention to release any tension that you're holding. I think I have a shamanic asana practice in here for you as well, a simple 10 minutes standing up practice. Um, I used to have lots more videos for you in here, but when my, my old personal profile got delayed, it did, disabled by Facebook, all of those videos were gone. Hundreds of hours. That's the beauty of Facebook. So if you can't find that video, let me know and I'll find a way to get it to you. So once we have that most important foundation in place, then how do you actually go about expanding your consciousness? So there's two different ways, okay? The first one is through your senses in everyday life. A really good practice to start is to train yourself in mindfulness. Just pay close attention to what you do and how it feels, to what you hear and to what you see. You know, we, we, so many of us just go through life and we don't, we are just in our minds and we're missing everything that's right in front of us. We don't even hear the birds chirping. We don't stop to smell the flowers. We don't feel the wind on our skin. And that's just, that's just like being dead already, isn't it? So we don't want that. So as you do the washing up, really feel the water on your hands. As you sit in nature, consciously touch the ground with your hands and feet. As you speak to your child, you know, really see her as the wonderful, incredible being that she is, feeling her energy. As you hoover, just feel into the old stagnant energy that is leaving your space. So many ways that you can do that. Like when I'm at the playground with my child, like the first thing I always do is, take off my shoes and I, I um, put my feet deep into the sand. And there's so many adults sitting around, look, sitting on the benches and they're, they're just looking at me, you know, what's she doing? And then I take my hoop and I start to hoop dance, you know, and nobody else is doing that. All the other adults are either sitting around staring into space, not even looking at their kids or they're on their phones. You know, that's, that's so sad. I, I mean, we must really wake up to the beauty that this life is and the wonder. I mean, in my work as a shaman, I work with many dying people and I can tell you that the one regret that they have is that they didn't pay more attention to, to their loved ones, first of all, that they didn't spend enough time with them, that they didn't appreciate them, much, them enough, and also that they didn't do what they actually wanted to do. You know, they always thought like, no, this is what I want to do, but I'm going to do it later. And then at some point that life is over. So those are the two biggest regrets. So let's not do that. Okay. Let's really be very present with this beautiful life that we've been given. And doing this kind of thing, being mindful, that will also really take the stress out of your life. I promise. Okay. It will even expand time for you. It's incredible what can happen when we start to really become present with ourselves. And with time, the simple everyday practice might develop into clear audience, clear sentience, and clairvoyance, the ability to hear, feel, and see beyond everyday consciousness and 
receive guidance and information from the middle world, the lower world and the upper world. Any questions? And yes, what you said, Magda, it is amazing that it's the same for all the people around the world. I mean, shamanism developed at roughly the same time all around the world, sometime between 40,000 years ago and 100,000 years ago. And that was at a time when the people didn't even have a direct means of communication. So it's just, it's just um, like I said, it's just accessing higher consciousness. It's an innate part of, of who we are. So it's just amazing when we can, can come back to that um, sacred ancient knowledge that you know was practiced by all of our ancestors good not seeing any questions for for what I was just covering I love it when I'm clear but please do ask questions if you have any yeah and then this there's the second way is the direct way to expand our consciousness where we skip working with our normal senses though I really recommend you do that anyway and we go straight into higher consciousness and we do that with shamanic journey where the beat of a shamanic drum puts us into a natural trance state and we are in the middle of higher consciousness just like that so what is shamanic journey like you can imagine it as a very deep meditation where you will hear and see and feel and maybe even smell and definitely travel the unseen energetic worlds and be able to use the energetic layer of reality to your own advantage and that of others. Now the possibilities of what you can do here with the help of your spirit guides is endless. From um, healing your inner child wounds to integrating um, your shadows like, um, like anger for example or guilt or shame to talking to your higher self, you know, the, your, the purest version of your incarnated self who has all the answers about which direction to go, going back to past lives, consciously designing your future, um, talking to your deceased loved ones, getting clarity on important events and decisions and much more. It's basically a direct access to life in its purely energetic form. So whatever you want to create or whatever you want to put in the past, you can directly do it without the struggle of trying to shift the reality in front of you that has already manifested because that's what most of us try and that's always going to be a struggle. We have to access the energy of the things instead if we want to, you know, if we want to have it a whole lot easier in life. Now expanding your consciousness in this way is the best thing that you can do to help others and of course yourself also in truly powerful ways in all areas of your life. Now, here's an example from my own life, okay? So imagine having a hurtful pattern with your four-year-old that is just tearing at your heart, but you don't know how to deal with the situation. You've tried everything in this realm of existence. And that was my case with my little one, um, who never wanted to go to bed and who would lay awake or cry instead and not stop, although I was with him all the time. And I tried everything for three years, from um, different bedtimes to different dinner times, to different dinner items, to changing the location of our bed, uh, singing to him, telling him stories, um, changing, changing my breath, the rhythm and the, the fastness of my breath, trying to fall asleep with him, um, giving him flower remedies, etc., etc. Nothing helped he would still take about two hours to finally fall asleep out of exhaustion every day. And then finally, I realized that I could just do a shamanic journey. And that's when I um, found out that he was feeling the trauma of being separated permanently from, from his mother, from me. That was a fear he had because his dad and I have both gone through that trauma of being separated from our mothers and he was just reliving that for us. He was feeling that within us. And then I worked on him energetically. And since ever since then, he's just, he falls asleep just fine. It takes like 15 minutes to half an hour and then he sleeps and it's not a struggle. He can just relax. So can you see how powerful this is? So that was just one example, but you can use it for everything to improve your lovership, to increase your self-love, to heal from 
feelings of um, unworthiness, not feeling good enough, not being good at receiving money, not knowing how to relax, helping your loved ones, endless possibilities. Everything in life always has an energetic source. And when we can get to that directly, then it saves us a lot of time, energy, money, and nerves. Any questions? Martina and Magda, you have both already learned journeying with me. Martina, you're saying the smartphones are good, but it, they often distract us from things um, that are here in the present moment. And we could learn to be really here when we talk with others or being in nature and enjoy. Absolutely. I don't take my phone with me when I go outside into nature. I rarely use my phone at all, um, to be very honest with you. I just use it when I'm when it's really, really necessary, when I actually have to call somebody or um, talk to some of my family members who don't have the internet or don't use as much. That's basically it. I don't do business from my phone. That's why I'm not active on Instagram because, you know, like, I mean, I would just go crazy. No, that, <laughs> you can't be a healer and run your business from a phone. It's just not possible. So, yeah, it's amazing when we have the possibility of a smartphone, but we mustn't let our lives... Um, be dictated by it. I find that really hard with my computer. It's where I work on. It's where, um, you know, I don't have a TV. So that's that's also where I um, watch films and all of these things. So I have to really be very mindful about how much I use it. Yeah. So shamanic journeying is something that not all that many people teach, especially not online. Okay. The knowledge of how to do it is a privilege that has long been passed down from shaman to apprentice. Um, who and all the apprentices were chosen through an initiation process like I have and like my own apprentices have. But I have actually found a way to teach shamanic journey that is easy and pampering through the combination with yoga. And I teach that as part of the shamanic yoga transformation, my three months group, pro group program, where you get to enjoy our monthly full moon and new moon rituals to let go of what does not serve you anymore and welcome into your life what you want to experience instead. And we also have weekly sharing sessions where you can ask all of your questions. So if you want to expand your consciousness and abilities, I have a really cool deal for you today. You can join the transformation for only 555 euros at the moment. I usually sell it for 999, so that's almost 50% off. And there's even an easy payment plan to go with that. Now, why am I offering this? It's because I know that so many of you have been struck hard by the current um, crisis financially. But at the same time, you know, this isn't just happening for nothing. OK, this this crisis is really an expression of the fact that we need to become so much more aware of what this life actually is and what we're actually supposed to do. It's like we're all zombies. OK, enough of that. So many people are waking up at the moment and starting their spiritual awakening. So this is the best possible moment to step up and learn these powerful tools that will allow you to navigate a rapidly changing world with ease and feel safe and guided each step of the way. And I'm also including lots of cool bonuses for you. First of all, a training on how to master manifesting, like how does manifestation actually really work? There's so much, so much nonsense out there. I will show you how it really works and it's easier than you think. I also have a two week course in there for you to get crystal clear on your calling. Also going into your unique beauty and power, your really your soul essence, your soul gift that ties in perfectly to our session today. And um, there's gonna there's also deep dive healing sessions for body, mind, heart and soul. There's the replays, all of the replays of last year's sharing sessions that that's 47 sessions on every topic that spiritual women love learning about. So goodbye, Netflix. And there's also the chakra healing series with um, shamanic healing sessions and super enjoyable daily practices for each of the chakras, like the sacral chakra dancing meditation, the navel chakra sun salutation, asana series, and much, much, much more. And the bonuses are only included if you join us within the next 72 hours, so the next three days. So chop, chop, gonna give you the link now so you can go check it out. And if you have questions, I am right here for you. 
Here you go. Good. Any questions about the transformation or about anything that we've covered today on how to recognize and expand your um, spiritual gifts? I don't see any questions coming up for now. Everybody is on a recording. I look forward to following up with you in the comments. And I look forward to seeing all of you here again next week for Lilith's live show, where I will talk about how you can balance your navel chakra or solar plexus chakra, the seat of your personal power. So if you're struggling with, um, you know, with manifesting things in your life, with, with your willpower, with actually getting stuff done, you know, feeling powerful, then this is definitely something that you don't want to miss. And all of my transformation members and apprentices, I will see you later today for the new moon manifesting ritual. Lots and lots of love to all of you. Mwah.